Hello and welcome to another Drugs Meet a Minute. I'm really pleased that I'm here today with Ange. Ange, tell everyone what you do for a job. Uh, my name's Ange Crutchwell. I'm a urology doctor based in South West. Fantastic. And, and kind of urology is basically kidneys, bladders? Kidneys, bladders and water works, yes. Fantastic. Um, and so we want to talk to you today specifically around the issue of ketamine. So a year ago, you and I wrote a paper together based mm -hmm. on data from the Global Drug Survey. And the headline from that was one in four people who use ketamine have got bladder problems. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people emailed and went, ketamine's been used for years, what's all the fuss now? Mm -hmm. So I guess my first question to you is, how long have people been concerned about a problem between ketamine and your bladder and waterworks? Well, the first um, studies came out in about 2008 from Hong Kong and from um, Canada. Uh, and those were just case series of people who had had ketamine uh, bladder symptoms and then in England we started noticing an increased number in the southwest of England and then these symptoms escalated as more and more people became aware of the symptoms the bladder symptoms and waterworks symptoms associated with ketamine use. But, but ketamine has been used as a medicine for decades it's been used recreationally for 20 or 30 years and has something changed about the way ketamine's been used or the sort of ketamine that's been used? I don't think it's the sort of ketamine that's, that's been used, but medically used ketamine is it's used very safely for lots of uses such as anaesthesia, pain relief, but um, it's the amount that's been used and, and um, over time and the amount that's used recreationally is, is much more than is used in a medical setting. Okay, so not necessarily frequency, but, but dose, dose ex exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I guess the first thing we should then move on to is clearing up the whole idea of what do we mean when we talk about ketamine bladder? Mm -hmm. what, what's ketamine bladder? Well, it's, it, it's, it's, maybe it's more sort of ketamine urinary tract, so it can affect the bladder, it can affect the kidneys as well. Um, and the symptoms that people describe are needing to go to, go to the toilet frequently, burning and stinging, um, passing blood, incontinence, um, and, and when severe they can get uh, pain in their back and bl blocked kidneys uh, and um, kidney failure. Okay. It all sounds pretty similar to a urinary tract infection. It's very similar to a urinary tract infection, but with urinary tract infections these are normally quite self-limiting um, symptoms. They get better with antibiotics. Um, and. And the ketamine bladder symptoms are much, much more severe. So this is pain that is so severe, it needs um, very strong painkillers. Uh, and with a urinary tract infection, you get a bit of burning and stinging. You maybe go a little bit more frequent, but uh, the, the problems with ketamine bladders, you can be going sort of 10, 15 times an hour, staying up all night, needing to pass water. And, and severe incontinence, a very small shrunken bladder, which is not what you get with a urine infection, which tends to get better afterwards. And when you say a small shrunken bladder, is that a bladder that's no longer flexible, so it becomes a bit of a hard... Yeah, sort of a scarred bladder, sort of a scarred... Which, which, because the bladder gets very inflamed, it can get, it can get small, shrunken, and scarred. Okay. Yeah. So what would be the first sort of symptom that people would notice? And, and does that symptom happen while they're using ketamine? Is it after? Well, it, it, I mean, some people have anecdotally have said that they get the symptoms um, within a, a couple of weeks of taking regularly. Uh, but most, mostly it's... It's, it's prolonged use and gradual symptoms getting worse over time. And the first thing that they tend to notice is, is going frequently and pain. And it's a sort of pain in the lower, lower abdomen over where the bladder is. And those are the first symptoms. And sometimes blood when they pass urine as well. Okay. So other than using more and using for longer, mm -hmm. are there any other things that we know about that make the chance of getting these bladder symptoms more likely? Well, the main things that we know of is an increased dose and taking it more frequently. Okay. Um, but I suppose if you've got infections as well, that increases the risk of risk of symptoms. Okay. Well, one of the things what I think we also found out was that people who were drinking a lot, alcohol, seem to have an increased risk. And certainly people talk about harm reduction for ketamine bladder as making sure you stay well hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Well, it's, it's difficult to tell. I mean, theoretically, if the... the that if what is damaging the bladder is excreted in the urine, then making the urine more concentrated, sorry, less concentrated by drinking more is, would be more logical to decrease the amount of, um, of toxins or whatever it is that excreted. We don't know specifically what it is yet. But it's a vicious circle. If you've got someone that's going to the toilet sort of 
four or five times an hour, the last thing they want to do is to increase the amount they're drinking. So you do get into a vicious cycle with the, the frequency okay. and the, the harm reduction, really. Okay. So you're a urologist, so you do surgical things. Mm -hmm. G give me an idea of the sort of patient you would be seeing who turns up with ketamine bladder. So it would it would it would be a young young man or young man or woman that had probably been to their doctors, their general, general practitioners, um, and common things occur occur commonly. Uh, so they might have been treated for an infection. Uh, it hasn't worked. Uh, they haven't told their GP that they're taking ketamine, um, and so it's, it's a sort of problematic symptoms. And quite often these people are at the end of their tether. It's difficult to maintain. A normal lifestyle so they can't sleep they may not um, be able to to do their job because they're in so much pain and because they need to spend so much time in the toilet um, and their you know their problems are pain going frequently going urgently and wetting themselves as well. which I imagine socially would suddenly also become really yeah. problematic yeah yeah so they come along and they see you what, what sort of tests do you do as a urologist well what 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 we need to make sure is that there's nothing else that's causing this. Um, so is there an infection that's causing this? Is it the ketamine? Um, and we don't have any tests that, that definitely confirm that it is the ketamine. If we, historically, we would look inside the bladder and the bladder would look very, very inflamed um, and very small capacity. But that doesn't necessarily um, change how we manage them. So nowadays, what we would tend to do is We'll add an infection, and get an ultrasound scan of the kidneys, so it's like a, a jelly scan like a pregnant lady would have, just to make sure that there's no blockage of the kidneys. Because not only can the ketamine affect the lining of the bladder, but the lining of the bladder is the same as the lining of the tubes that drain the kidneys and the kidneys itself. Uh, so looking with a scan can make sure that, that no harm higher up has been done. Okay. And... So once you've excluded an infection, you've gone, you've got an inflamed bladder, it looks shrunken, what can you do? Um, first of all, um, it's, it's really harm reduction, uh, making sure that, um, that the, the patients are in touch with um, drug agencies uh, nearby. And then pain control is, is, is really important. Um, and as urologists, we're not pain specialists, but we do have help with pain teams, and so the medications and pain pain treatments that can be tried. I mean, ketamine is a really good painkiller, and so some people tell me, yeah, because of the terrible pain they're in, yeah, they therefore yeah. have to continue taking ketamine. Yeah, we see that quite a lot. Yeah. So, what sort of things would would you get that replaced with? Is that going to be opiate painkillers? So, um, buprenorphine patches we've okay. used, yeah. Um, and um, another um, other medications like amitriptyline, which is used for chronic pain. Okay. Um, and and that can help not only with the bladder symptoms but with the pain as well. Okay. So for those people who are going to get better, how quickly after someone stopping ketamine use could they expect to see an improvement in their symptoms? Well, it, it, I mean, anec anecdotally, once they stop, majority will get better. Um, but getting better um, we, we don't know whether or not the the effects on the bladder are reversible um, to some people getting better is is from going ten times an hour to going five times an okay. hour um, but it's enough to get the the symptom symptoms better I mean in in a in about a third of patients we found that the effects are completely reversible so they go back to normal okay. um, but it but it's difficult to tell but after stopping um, Majority notice a significant improvement within a few days, within a few weeks. Within well, we normally see them about three months later. So about three months later, then they should have significantly improved. Okay. But there's a small number of, of people that this that the the bladder isn't able to repair itself, and it does remain scarred. Okay. And in those, then we might may need to think about other um, other treatments. But that's a minute number of the total number of ketamine users with bladder problems. Okay. So we hear people saying oh my god, ketamine leads to having your bladder removed. Mm. So, I know where your bladder is, but when you remove someone's bladder, mm. where do you put their bits and where do they pee from? I think, I think the, 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 the operations, the people who've had operations for ketamine bladder, it's last ditch and, and it's the sort of operations that we do for, for removing bladders for bladder cancer, so it's a significant, massive operation. Okay. 
uh, there are two there are two schools of thought. Um, some people have used bowel to make the bladder bigger, so to keep the bladder in to, to make the bladder bigger. So you take out one of the fibrotic bits and you patch it up with something else that can act exactly. as a bladder. Exactly, okay. to make the, the capacity bigger. Um, but what is used more, more, more commonly is to remove the bladder in its entirety and either make a new bladder out of bowel, so sort of sewing it together in a football shape okay. and, and, and keeping it in, or um, making bowel um, into a stoma, which is like um, an, an opening into the skin and having a, a stoma bag so that uh, urine would permanently be draining out of the, out of the abdomen, which is obviously a major, major operation which affects you know, your lifestyle um, for the rest of your life. Okay. Um, so I, I guess finally I just want to think about some harm reduction tips for people because people watching mm -hmm. this might quite like using ketamine and mm -hmm. might not particularly want to stop but they're not going to want to lose their bladders. Mm -hmm. So other than using less, less often, staying hydrated and not drinking alcohol and I might have taken your thunder here, <laughs> are there other things that people should do or is it just don't use that much ketamine I that think, often. I think that really is the that is really is the the, the the best thing that we could be found. It's the only thing that can really help with the pain and help decrease the symptoms. Okay. I mean, you know, there are anecdotal um, reports of, 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 of treatment into the bladder, but what is the point of, of of medication when the best is stopping taking it or okay. decreasing the amount? And are there any people who seem particularly vulnerable? So boys more than girls? Not that I know of, no. No, okay. no. Lovely. In that case, Ange, thank you very much. That's been fascinating. Thank okay. you.